David Crosby and Graham Nash singing Teach Your Children Well at Occupy Wall Street on Tuesday. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. The, le the legendary musicians David Crosby and Graham Nash at Occupy Wall Street singing Teach Your Children. Crosby and Nash visited the protest encampment on Tuesday and performed four songs for a packed crowd. Today they join us here. Uh, David Crosby and Graham Nash o Occupy Wall Street is the latest in a number of causes the musicians have supported in their historic career stretching back nearly five decades. They're best known as founding members of Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young, a supergroup that performed at Woodstock and sold millions of records. Prior to that, David Crosby was a member of the Birds, and Graham Nash was in the Hollies. Both are two-time inductees into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Here's a brief sampling of some of their most famous songs. Crosby and Nash recorded live this past summer. That was part of the trailer to a new DVD titled Crosby Nash in Concert. Throughout their careers, politics has played a central role in their music. One of Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young's most famous songs may be the Neil Young classic, Ohio, written in 1970, days after four students at Kent State were shot dead by the Ohio National Guard. Uh, two years earlier, the band recorded the song Chicago, following the violent police crackdown in Chicago during the Democratic National Convention in 1968. In the 70s, Graham Nash helped form Musicians United for Safe Energy, which organized the historic No Nukes concert at Madison Square Garden in 1979. Just this past summer, Crosby, Stills and Nash played a No Nukes reunion show with Bonnie Raitt and Jackson Brown and others to raise money for relief efforts following the Japan nuclear meltdown. David Crosby has been a longtime advocate of campaign finance reform, co-author of a book about music and activism called Stand and Be Counted, Making Music, Making History. Well, David Crosby and Graham Nash, welcome to Democracy Now! It's great to have you with us. How are you both? Great Very day. good. How was it going to occupy Wall Street? Phenomenal. It was an incredible experience. It really was. And what we were hearing down there, obviously, was the voice of the people. What brought you there? Um, how did this get organized? Well, it, it's sort of part of our job. Uh, but, you know, part of our job is just to make music that makes you feel good. Uh, but part of our job is to be the town crier, the troubadour, carry the message and stuff. And when we saw what was going on down there, uh, we definitely wanted to be a part of it and taste it and feel it and find out, you know, what it was and how it worked and try we to in, try we, to figure out what was going to happen. We were in uh, Europe for the last seven weeks, so we kind of missed a lot of it. And, <laughs> but we talked about it at every single concert, and we thought, well, you know, maybe there's a language barrier, maybe they're not going to understand. Every time we mentioned OWS, they cheered. 
And were and, they and, having those kind of Occupy movements around Europe? Indeed, and, pro and as David points out, larger than the than Zuccotti Park. And uh, the young people at Zuccotti Park, uh, how many of them were familiar with your music? A lot of them, because as you can see from some of the video, they were singing like crazy. I mean, you know, all see, we had to do... All of them, because they sang with us. That was yeah. really, for me, that was the best part. It they was started... like a variation on people's mic, you know, because there isn't an amplification system. You have to repeat whatever yes. it says. They, uh, they, you know, when they started singing along with us, uh, it, it was very inspiring. I felt like I was really doing my job. I felt like I was Woody Guthrie right then. Hey, would you guys consider singing another of the songs that you sang at Occupy Wall Street right here without your guitars, without sure. all the accoutrements? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Yeah. This is this is a song that David wrote called What Are Their Names, an incredibly pointed piece of poetry. They've sort of taken this one to be the, their official song, or at least they told us that. Do you want us to do it now? Please. Who are the men who really run this land? And why do they run it with such a thoughtless hand? What are their names? And on what streets do they live? I'd like to ride right over this afternoon and give them a piece of my mind about peace for mankind. Peace is not an awful lot to ask. Graham Nash and David Crosby, live in our New York studio just a few days after singing at Occupy Wall Street. Talk a little about music, art, and protest. We're human. Basically, we're human beings. We get up every morning the same as everybody else, take our first breath, thank God that we're alive, and get on with life. We get affected <clears throat> by what's going on around us. We're human beings, and very, in, in, even though we are, you know, rock and roll stars, whatever that means, our feet are firmly planted on the ground, and we get affected by what happens to us as people, and we have to say something about it. And David? Music is a terrific vehicle for ideas. It transmits ideas uh, better than almost anything. And ideas are the most powerful stuff on the planet. And uh, it's, it's been uh, something that, that we felt was a, an, an obligation and part of our job the whole time. And people have always called us a, a, you know, a political band. But when you shoot four students down and they get slaughtered for their constitutional right to address their government's failings, is that political or is that a human story? When you bind and chain and gag Bobby Seale at the Democratic trial, is that political or is that a human story? And what's been over the years the reaction of the industry, the music industry, to your continued uh, consistency on raising so many of these issues? We don't. Some, get... some of them just really laugh at us. I mean, if you, the industry is a broad spectrum thing. On one side, you got the Disney Pop Tart Factory, and uh, on the other, you've got people who come up and are of the school that came from the Weavers and Josh White and. And, uh, and uh, Pete, and Woody, yeah. Pete and Woody, and uh, and our people with consciousness. Um, we put out on Facebook and Twitter that you guys were coming, and lots of people emailed us, tweeted oh us questions, posted them on Facebook. Lee Kerr wrote in asking, how did today's demonstrations feel different from the demonstrations of the 1960s? They don't to me. Didn't to me. They're exactly the same. Same as Selma, same as women's rights. Same, same kind of emotion, same kind of pride. Except now they don't have mimeograph machines. They have I know, but <laughs> computers they have the internet. And, it's they have the internet, and that's the secret. The, yeah. the, the spread of a movement that, look, this thing is like a, 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 a solution that's reaching saturation. And at the right point, all of a sudden the crystal forms. And that's what's going on down there in that park. The America is a solution, and it is reaching a saturation point. And this crystal is starting to happen all over the country. There's an awful lot of people who feel that they are not represented in Congress, that, that Congress has been bought by the uh, you know, large corporations, and that they are uh, powerless, and that they are getting the short end of the stick. 
uh, all across the political spectrum, even conservatives, feeling, you know, they're not being represented and, and that what was supposed to be their representation is... Doesn't exist. Doesn't exist. Um, Maria Aitz Wagner left this question on our Facebook page. She said, I think it's time for a concert to support the Occupy movement with all the good protest songs from the 60s. Would you start the Occupy music movement before they take away our songs, get all the groups together from Woodstock to make a new album to help the protesters? And she said those donations would go to groups supporting the basic necessities uh, to the forefront. I think she has a fantastic idea, and we're going to think about that heavily. Yeah, except you know, for the line, take, take away the songs. Nobody Nobody can take away a song. Nobody can own one, and nobody can shut it up. And that's the power of music. Uh, Graham, I like to ask you, you, over the years, you've especially focused on uh, uh, nuclear power, nuclear energy, and the, the big concert, obviously, in 79 in Madison Square Garden, now recently after the Fukushima disaster. Mm -hmm. uh, your sense of where our, our world is going on this issue of nuclear power, especially those now who are saying, well, at least it's cleaner than coal, and it provides an opportunity to, to, uh, to get away from fossil fuels? Uh, um, it's a complicated question. It may be cleaner than coal. We know what coal does, right? Um, however, with a half-life of a quarter of a million years, who the hell is going to be able to take care of all this stuff? Where are we going to store the waste? Where are we, how are we going to protect them against terrorist activities, about transporting the waste across countries to, to where? They tried in Yucca Mountain. And then they found that, the, that there was earthquakes and, and water down there that would, that would affect the nuclear waste. So we really have no, no idea what we're going to do with all this waste. And it's mounting by the second. And that's only the first part of the problem. The second part is that human beings make mistakes. That gave us Chernobyl. That gave us Three Mile Island. Uh, Mother Nature can kick our butts anytime she wants to. That gave us Fukushima. Uh, it's not safe. There are two plants in California right on the beach. One of them's on a fault line. It's 50 miles to windward of my house. I, I, I keep, uh, I sort of look that way to make sure I, can, I spot the plume when it happens. Uh, it's, it, there's nothing safe about it, and there's nothing green about poisoning your country. Since our Facebook friend asked about Woodstock, let's go back to 69 for a moment to that part of Crosby, Stills, and Nash's performance right there, upstate New York. It's getting to the point where I have no fun anymore. I'm sorry. and David Crosby and Graham Nash still with us here today in New York as you look back to 1969. Your thoughts on today? It's, it hasn't changed much. There are many problems that we have to deal with as human beings, and we need to do it gracefully and nonviolently. We're going to leave it there, but we're going to continue the interview, and we're going to post it online at democracynow.org.